celebrating 50 years at Hoffman Street and 72 years in ministry for Emmanuel Church. So can we give a, give a clap, give a shout? You know, I was just talking with um, Mr. Dilgert here, and he's been here since the 60s. He's been here throughout the entire time. He laid some of the bricks in, you know, outside. And we've got, we've got people that have been here since the beginning. And I'm so excited to say that we're going to hear stories from the folks that have, that have uh, helped to build this church. And um, I want to encourage us um, today to, to listen in. Why do we look back? Well, we look back for two reasons. Number one, we look back to learn. Yes? We want to learn. There's stuff that if we look back and we listen in to what the Holy Spirit's teaching us through the wisdom of folks that have, have gone before, we're going to learn something. Amen? And, and we want to be humble enough to learn. And we also look back to remember. Okay? We want to remember. We want to, we want to celebrate the amazing things God has done, right? In Israel, there, there was a, you know, a time where they forgot. And the issue was they forgot the testimonies of God. And so we want to remember those things. So stand with me this morning. To begin this special service, we're going to uh, have a scripture reading. And what I'd wa- like you to do is I want you to read with me every word that is bold on the screen, okay? So this comes from Deuteronomy And it shall be that if you earnestly obey my commandments, which I command you today, and everyone together, to love the Lord your God and serve him with all your heart and with all your soul, then I will give you the rain for your land in its season, the early rain and the latter rain, that you may gather in your grain your new wine and your oil. And I will send grass in your fields for your livestock, that you may eat and be filled. Take heed for, to yourselves, lest your heart be deceived, and you turn aside and serve other gods and worship them. Lest the Lord's anger be aroused against you, and he shut up the heavens so that there be no rain, and the land yield no produce, and you perish quickly from the good land which the Lord is giving you. Therefore you shall lay up these words of mine in your heart." And in your soul, and bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. Everyone, you shall teach them to your children, speaking of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up. And you shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates, that your days and the days of your children may be multiplied in the land of which the Lord swore to your fathers to give them, like the days of the heavens above the earth. For if you carefully keep all these commandments, which I command you to do, to love the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways, and to hold fast to him, then the Lord will drive out all these nations before you, and you will dispossess greater and mightier nations than yourselves." Every place on which the sole of your foot treads shall be yours. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, we thank you that in your life is the fulfillment of this promise that you gave to Moses, to Israel, to Joshua, and then everyone after. Lord, even throughout the years, Israel did not listen, and yet you continued to pursue And you said a time will come when they'll gather and they'll listen on a mountain. They'll listen to the words of the one that you will send. And Jesus, you are the one. If we celebrate anything today, Lord, we celebrate the gospel of Jesus Christ. We celebrate your name today, Jesus. Because it it is your word that we live. We live And breathe through your word, Lord. Knowing you is all we need. Holy Spirit, I ask you just to come today. Be glorified in our midst. As we celebrate and lean in and learn to love one another. And to obey your word that says when we sit, teach these things to the children. I pray, Lord, that we would have ears that would hear today. Not just in the service, but at the lunch 
And as we listen to one another, let us learn to honor one another and love one another. For this is the command you've given. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to thank all those that came out today. People that I remember from uh, our youth group back in the late 60s, the 70s, and the early 80s. We had fantastic times. Also, I do want to recognize a few uh, people uh, that were uh, on the board at the time. So uh, with us today, if you could just raise your hand, that would be nice. Willie Damont, thank you. Willie and Gertrude, they uh, go to a Pentecostal church in Burlington now. And you'll see them often at Bethel Park. Uh, and also uh, John, John Klein Sr., unfortunately, uh, he said he's going to be here, but for whatever reason, he can't make it. He usually sits uh, in the back there by the door. And also, uh, at the time, that we had a, a building committee, and uh, one of the people on the building committee was Hugo Hintz. Hugo uh, is at Nithview Care Center, and one of his sons, Harry, and one of his daughters, Jeanette, is with us today. So thank you all for coming. So I've taken this from uh, Dad's diaries and my reco recollections. The church building where this congregation moved from was and is the building at the corner of Ottawa Street East and Weber Street North. That building was built in 1959-1960. My father, Reverend A. Druitz, was called to be pastor of the German-based church and the family arrived on Friday, September 5th, 13th, 1968, 55 and a half years ago. Already on October 10th, 1968, out of the blue, Dad was approached by a pastor of another congregation asking about the possibility to purchase the church at Ottawa and Weber. Although this church was at a prime location, it was getting too small and was also located right at the corner of a very busy intersection. Inside the building, one could hear the noise uh, from the traffic. Dad was caught off guard by this approach. However, on October 14th, 1968, several members of the board looked at a parcel of land on First Avenue, consisting of five house building lots with one very old house on it. This property would have required a rezoning change from the city of Kitchener. The board did agree to pursue this, and with the support of the congregation, put down a conditional offer on this property. For a number of years, the subject of selling the church and building a new one became dormant and did not restart until 1972. Dad's diaries did not mention why the property on First Avenue was not purchased, but presumably the rezoning was not received. And instead of the property, and instead, a property on Hoffman Street was purchased. Even at this time, one of the criteria for the property was that it needed to be close to and, if not, on a bus route. A very general meeting took place with the architect from Toronto who made some good suggestions. Dad made some sketches and plans for the six-sided building to allow seating to be slightly angled towards and around the front platform. This building was very futuristic and a revolutionary building shape for the German branch church in Canada in the early 70s. During the year 1972, talk of selling escalated and there was further work on plans and meetings with the architect to finalize the plans for the hexagonal six-shaped, sorry, <laughs> shaped building. The church building on Weber Street in Ottawa was sold in the fall of 1972. The last service in that church building was held on Sunday, December 10th, 1972. Thereafter, services were held at Eastwood Collegiate on Weber Street, and the services during the week were held at Salem Baptist Church at Weber Street and Ross Avenue. A very high percentage of the congregants were excited and ready to put up with those temporary locations for a short period of time. February 10th, 1973, Hans Kristakis was appointed project manager by the building committee and Willie Damont to help him. 
Together, they would do all the required woodwork. On March 16, 1973, the church finally received the building permit from the city and final plans from the architect. Saturday, March 24th at 4 p.m. was the groundbreaking service here on this property. While this was happening at IPC, there were also quite a number of disturbing issues taking place in the world, both politically and economically. Now watch how the world goes round. The United States and Russia were aggressively doing nuclear tests. Syria and Israel were at war. The Shah of Iran announced that a 1954 oil operating agreement will not be renewed in 1979. This led to various countries in the Middle East increasing the price of oil to a point by the end of the oil embargo, oil had risen from $3 a barrel to $12 a barrel, a 400% increase. This sent economic shock waves through Europe and North America, and last but not least, a halt to IPC's building program. That and the board <clears throat> were faced with runaway inflation and interest rates were going up to combat inflation. Does this sound familiar? The price of all building materials went higher and th than anyone could think were possible. IPC at this time had no church building. Money in the bank was losing value at a rapid pace. He was concerned about the people in the church. This was a crisis. Things could have, could have gone entirely different. However, as we see so many times over, when a crisis hits, people do pull together. The congregation was very cohesive and dedicated and a dedicated group of German Christians, determined to see them build a new church building. That is exactly what happened. Even the youth group, which was also very cohesive, due to their parents opening up their houses for various gatherings, made it a point to stick together. I would like to have been a fly on the wall during the board meetings at that time. There were those that wanted to forge ahead with their original design, even though costs escalated drastically. Others wanted a complete rethink and a more traditional style and therefore lower cost. Although this was very difficult for dad and the congregation in, in the final end, he was more concerned for the people of the church as opposed to the church building itself. He did not want people coming to church on Sunday and during the delivery of the sermons, think about the church's next mortgage payment as opposed to listening to the word of God. During this crisis, while we gathered at Eastwood Collegiate, Dad had a special morning services. The people of Israel, after 40 years of wandering in the desert, preparing for and crossing the River Jordan. April 7, 1973, there was a meeting with the building committee and an organization called Church Enterprises, which assisted churches in making suitable but simple adjustments to church enterprise standardized plans to reduce cost. During the month of April, a lot of time was spent with the architect of this organization, dotting all the I's and crossing the T's. At the same time, all the necessary approvals needed to be given by the city of Kitchener. Unfortunately, the interior of the newly designed building was just too simple and not up to the quality of the congregation ex expectations. So Hans and Willie basically put their finishing carpentry skills to work and this is the result, including the hidden doors at the front here. If, you, if you're here for the first time, you would not know that there are hidden doors there. With the oil price shock to the economy, demand for housing and commercial building construction was very low due to the high interest rates. Therefore, there was a lot of unemployment building and in, in, in the building trades. At the time, this assembly had a lot of people in the trades and it was actually incredible how fast the building went up. I remember Saturday, September 20th, 
1973, many volunteers put up the roof, and with my two left hands, I only qualified as a laborer. Da Dad writes, my many brethren came and volunteered to put the roof up. It was a great pleasure to observe the joyfulness of the brethren and also the healthy humor. The ladies of the church provided coffee, drinks, and lunch. The entire roof was completed. This was an, ac an accomplishment and a major saving. Again, this could only take place having a group of Christians pursuing the same goal through dedication, commitment, and action. December 1973 was the first Sunday when services were held in this church, in the lower auditorium, as the upstairs was not complete. The lower auditorium is where we will go after this service. March the 3rd, exactly 50 years and one week ago, this building was dedicated to the work of the Lord. As some of you may remember, in 1992, 1993, about 20 years later, renovations in the side wing were designed and built. This included a redesigned entrance from the parking lot with an enclosed stairway, an extended front entrance, larger foyer, a new pastor's office, new washrooms, and more space in the basement under that wing. Interestingly, the chairperson of that renovation committee was not Arthur Druids, but one of his sons. My brother Charles, who now lives in Kelowna, BC, and myself as church treasurer. Willie Damont was the, the project manager and the site manager. I believe that the Lord is opening a window of heaven for many dedicated Christians of several generations that were with us at the time. And now we see what has taken place here, right now. I'm sure they will be pleased with what they are seeing and how IPC is reaching out to a local community, Southdale, here in Kitchener. Last and definitely not least, yes, our assembly has had its challenges. However, God has helped us through them. I am thankful for all the people that have joined IPC in the last 20 years, the last five years, and yes, in the last year. Without you, we would not be here today. God bless. Guys, just tell me, tell me what it was like in the beginning. Give me, give me a memory, the first memory that comes to your, to your mind. Well, um, I do remember um, 1973. I was three years old. <laughs> I mean, vaguely. Yeah. Uh, it was very different. Uh, yeah. We had Sunday school downstairs with, uh, back then we would say, we had a lot of respect for our elders. We would call them Geschwister and Brüder. So Brother, Brother Schitzkowski, um, pastor, yeah. or Mr. Schitzkowski was our um, Sunday school director. Yeah. Mrs. Schitzkowski was our Sunday school teacher. And so just many, many memories. The early years, um, I still remember Sunday school being in, in German. Yeah. And um, I remember... I think uh, one thing that I do recall is um, because the immigrants, uh, we were German immigrants from Eastern Europe, mm -hmm. and our forefathers had gone through a lot of hardship. And so um, when they did come together here, there was a real closeness, yeah. Um, yeah. which many other groups can um, uh, relate to when they go through difficulties. Um, uh, there was uh, a, a sense of, of helping, and um, it, there were cultural differences, but uh, there was uh, the families were were uh, really supported each other. Yeah, yeah. So I remember that calling. Everyone was an uncle and an aunt. I love that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. How can we keep that? What do you think, Rob? This is freestyle. It's not in the notes, but um, what well, do you think? I 
I think we can learn a lot from our, our Latin brothers and sisters. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah. um, you know, our characteristics. We we have a lot of good qualities. Uh, yeah. we, we tend to, we have a tendency to like to be on time. Mm -hmm. We like to keep things clean mm -hmm. and neat. Mm -hmm. um, but our our uh, we are stubborn, mm. and uh, but deep deep down we do have big hearts. Yeah, um, that's but good. Our, our Latin brothers and sisters they are much warmer. They know how to hug. Yeah. And uh, so we can learn a lot from one another. Amen. Yeah. I love that. And then it was your dad who brought English services in. Is that right, Harold? When did that happen? No, actually, it wasn't my dad. It my, wasn't your dad. My okay. dad uh, uh, became the uh, treasurer, secretary treasurer of the German branch of the Pentecostal Assemblies of Canada. So that went right across the country from, uh, from Montreal to... Uh, British Columbia, Vancouver. Uh, the uh, English services started uh, after that mm. uh, with uh, Pastor Middle State and Pastor Kniesel, who came on board uh, in 19... Pa Pastor Middle State came on board in 1975 after Dad, and then uh, in 1980, Pastor Kniesel came on board. And the, the English services started uh, Sunday evenings, and then uh, there was a progression uh, with time. Mm. Uh, so, you know, I mean, we are all people. True. We, we all have our, our ideas and our opinions. And uh, the, thing, the thing, as I read, is a matter of having the same goal, Amen. being persistent, mm -hmm. and working out the differences. Mm -hmm. It's just as important to work out the differences in the church as it is in the family, Amen. as it is in couples. My wife and I have been together for 49 plus years. We don't think the same. We have differences of opinion, but we, but we work things out. Amen. And you need to be dedicated and trust each other and Unfortunately, uh, dedication is one of the things that uh, is not as, uh, as high as it used to, to be in today's society. It's true. Yep. Yeah, I like what you said about how we stuck together, because I think that that is, I mean, love sticks together. When we really love someone, we stick with them, right? And we face the difficulties, and that is a big deal uh, in, the, in the church community, because we're, you know, it's hard enough for two people. It's hard enough for me and Thelma, and we add all of you guys. You know? <laughs> we got to work these things out. So that's beautiful, Harold. Very well said. Um, so tell me a funny story. I want to. I want to hear like a funny story. What's the? What's the, what's something that comes to mind that maybe it wouldn't be? I'm pushing you a little bit. Might not be comfortable to tell us, but I'm. I'm asking for it. Give me. Give me the knee slapper. Rob, I'll, I'll, I'll give you the knee slapper uh, <laughs> and, and give you, give you time, some time to think. All right. So <laughs> my dad was not known for his short sermons. Okay? People, people were itching uh, to go to Swiss Chalet. So the, the funny thing is, so my dad passed away at the end of August... Uh, 2011. The funeral took place at this church. Now, tradition has had it that after the church service, the the cemetery service would happen right after, mm -hmm. and then after that, all the people would come back from the cemetery, and then we would have refreshments and fellowship at uh, downstairs in the basement. So after a long service, uh, there were many speakers there, there's, there's no question it went twice as long as a normal funeral. And uh, the coffin was placed in the hearst. Guess what? The hearst wouldn't start. 
And the funeral director said, this has never happened before. <laughs> and he was flustered and didn't know what to do. Well, all the people were waiting outside, and some were even in the cars waiting to go. The procession didn't proceed. Hmm. Another hearse had to be brought in from the funeral home before wow. we could go to the cemetery. Hmm. So my father had control of the church service right until the last day. <laughs> That's crazy. That is so good. Pastor's always delaying lunch, eh? Sounds familiar. Okay, what about you, Rob? Well, I was thinking um, uh, our church uh, has always been affiliated with Bethel Park, and for those of you who are, are new here, uh, you may have heard it uh, about uh, a place that we, we go to, and at age 11, uh, we had, uh, it was kids' camp, and um, I remember there being an altar call to receive salvation. And um, I, at age 11, can remember very vividly um, stepping out to the front and, and asking the Lord to um, be the Lord of my life. Um, and I remember coming back to this church and um, Mrs. Horn was my Sunday school teacher and I had told her that uh, what had happened. Mm -hmm. And she seemed kind of skeptical. Hmm. So Mrs. Put Horn actually test. Um, went through the whole process one more time, just to make sure. Make sure. <laughs> like, a, like a double dunk. Yes. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Well, bless her heart. And there, <laughs> there, I, I'm, I'm going to mention a person because I know he would be fine with it. He's yeah. a good friend of mine. Mrs. Crumpets' son, Riney Crumpets came into church one Sunday, and he may have had a long, light and long night, and uh, so he ended up falling asleep in the pew. <laughs> and uh, Pastor Kniesel had a service. The service still was in German, and yeah. it was about Lazarus. Uh -huh. And um, <laughs> He woke him up. He said, Lazarus, steh auf. <laughs> in other words, stand get up, up. Get up, yeah. And um, yeah. all Reine had heard was, Stand up. <laughs> so he was the only person to stand up. And we all, we all sat in the that's back great. corner and, and that's began great. laughing. Oh, that's awesome. I love that. That is funny. Yeah, you can clap for that. That's good. Um, okay, so let me ask you, fellas. Um, you know, I, we've heard many things that God's done for Emmanuel Church, but what, what's something that sticks out that God has done. You know, Israel was told when they gather, we heard that this morning, uh, that we should tell stories. So give us a story of a miracle or a testimony that God has performed in our midst here. So <clears throat> today we have our son Eric here, and Eric is uh, going to turn 24. Yep. And so 22 years ago, mm -hmm. and how time flies. Um, our son, I was working in Germany, and our, our son... Eric, uh, we were told he was diagnosed with leukemia. Wow. And um, I remember our church um, having a week of prayer for him. For him. Yeah. Amen. So I remember the prayers, and, and this is something that really um, spoke to my wife. Mm -hmm. We could sense, sense those prayers. Yeah, yeah. So... Many memories of... And he's of, doing well today. Of, of, of just a... <laughs> now, the Lord. however, I, 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 I do want to say that it's been a long journey. Because yeah. I'm looking back now, 32 years ago, my father passed away. And it was a difficult time for all of us. Mm -hmm. And um, for me especially, I remember um, having a lot of responsibility and feeling sort of lost. And I remember there was a pastor here, and his name was Steve Hawkins. Thank you so much. Um, so Steve Hawkins, that's fine. Steve Hawkins um, was actually here doing a ceremony, um, a, a sermon on, um, on Israel. Yeah. And I can't say that he even knew who I was. So this is how I know that... Um, uh, there was a word in the congregation mm -hmm. and an interpretation by Steve Hawkins, and it was specifically for me Come on. 32 years ago. So good. 
and I don't forget it. And, and I, I think we as a church need to be reminded that we do need to share what God has done in our lives because he's still the same. Amen. So um, the word, I won't get into detail, but um, just to s- sum it up briefly, and it was um, for me not to look to man, yes. but to look to the new father, which mm-hmm. God has given me. Amen. Wow. And so when we look back at this journey, um, I can say that, as it says in Scripture, that this life will not be easy. Mm-hmm. Um, but the thing is, is that when we do fix our eyes on Jesus, he, he does take care of us. Amen. Amen. Um, but this is to say that we, we do, we, are conf- we often don't talk about it, but we do have hardships in our That's life. Right. Yeah. All of us have faced um, the loss of, loss of loved ones, loss of um, parents, children, and it's something that's very difficult to oftentimes discuss. Um, so there has, has been um, a, a many joyous occasions, but there have been hardships, and that's mm-hmm. a, part, a part of life. Yeah. And yeah. so one, one thing that I had a chance to, I had a chance to speak with my sister last night, and there's some things we just don't understand. It was in 2018 when she lost her husband, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. the church had been, been praying mm-hmm. for healing. Yeah. And we prayed and believed, and the outcome was not mm-hmm. what we had anticipated. Mm-hmm. And so oftentimes um, there are things that we just don't understand. Yeah. yeah. I so appreciate what you're sharing. And I think, you know, it's true. The Lord says that it's difficult. Difficult is the way. And that we, we're led through the valley, you know, but we're, he's the miracle, right? He's the miracle in the midst of it. And I also agree, I love that he shared about the words. Church, we need to be more open to speak words of knowledge, speak words of prophecy, stand up and speak in tongues and be who we are. Sometimes I think we, we're afraid to be who we are, but we are spirit-filled people, right? And we, we want to walk out the spiritual gifts. So thank you for sharing. Um, imagine if, if uh, they didn't do that that day, yes. right? You wouldn't have heard that word and had that strength from heaven, so... Can we give him a hand for that? Thank you, Rob. Um, Harold, what, what do you think? And I think with this, we'll, we'll close. Uh, okay, I'm going to come at this uh, slightly different. Uh, I, we, we need to remember where the uh, German-based people came from. Most of them came from Europe after the Second World War. The Germans were not exactly loved in Canada. Mm. And I know that distinctly as a child, when my dad was, uh, got, had his first pastorate in Kelowna in 1955. Mm. British Columbia was very British at the time. Mm. The Germans and the British people weren't exactly friends. But uh, having said that, we know what hardship is our parents also knew what it was to follow God's ways. And one thing that was very big in those days, we often had a prayer service after the evening service, the prayer room. The room down below us originally was a prayer room. Hmm. And uh, also in the early 70s, uh, Gertrude, I, I think if, I think it was in the early 70s when we did have a, a, a speaker and his wife. They were both enthusiastic for the Lord. He was an evangelist. And uh, I think we had services every day for two weeks. I, I, will, I will never forget that. Uh, however, moving, uh, moving to t- today's environment, my, my heart uh, started to uh, really... Uh, uh, pump for joy when non-German people started coming to our church. Mm-hmm. And I'm a pretty forthright person. No. <laughs> <laughs> so I asked the question, what made you come to this church? What made you come again to this church? Yeah. And the answer I got more than once was... We feel the love here. 
We know you are descendants of immigrants. We are immigrants. We know you know what we are going through. Yeah, amen. Amen. And, it's good. Uh, it's good. So, you know, I mean, that's why I said at the end, and I meant it last but not least, we have very, very many people here of uh, Spanish with Spanish background. Mm -hmm. You know, we we are squareheads, as 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 Rob uh, uh, said. We we are we are stiff. It's nice to be a little more open in the service, okay, and uh, and so on. Uh, yeah, everything has its extremes. You can be too solemn. You can be too too open. But the, everything with a, with a matter of balance. And, and, and I'm so glad, and I'll close with this. My heart jumped for joy Christmas Eve 2022 when we sang Silent Night in mm -hmm. Spanish, yep. in French, yep. in German, and in English. Yep. We are truly the mosaic of Canada and I hope we grow as such in decades to come. Amen. 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 I'm actually going to ask you to pray. So <clears throat> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you guys to share just a closing thought and then we're going to stand to pray together. Um, but why, what, what makes you guys stay at Emmanuel? I want to hear from, I think that's an important question. I know what made it made us come here. We just heard it, but what makes you stay? Why would it, why is it important to stay? To well, you, I think with anything, it's um, relationships. Yeah, it's good. It's, yep. What do you think, Carol? So, uh, I am shifting my attitude and my thought process. I want to give the responsibility, and I have. I'm no longer on the board. My son is on the board. Amen. I want the next generation and next generations to deal with the, today's issues, which were different than what I had to deal with, but they need to learn to, to deal with them. And I would rather be in the, in the, in the background to, to, to counsel them and help and lead them through that process. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's why uh, I'm, uh, I'm dedicated to this church. Amen. Can we stand together and we're going to pray and ask these two men to pray. And uh, Rob, you could start and maybe Harold, you can close and then we'll, uh, let's just pray together as the Spirit leads. Okay. Lord, we give you thanks this morning that we could come together um, to celebrate this occasion. Yes, Lord. And Lord, um, the importance of, of reflection. Of course, Lord, we, we look forward to what you have in store. But, Lord, we do want to remember the things that you have done in the past. Yes. Um, and yes. that helps us to learn. It helps us to understand and, um, and be reminded mm -hmm. of, of that you still are the same today as you were yesterday. Yes, Lord. And, Lord, we give you the rest of this day, and we pray a blessing over each and every one that joined us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Dear Lord, we want to thank you for this Sunday morning. I want to thank you that we, some of us can experience being here for 50 years, Lord. Lord, we, we thank you for the past, but we look to your guidance and your blessings for the future, Lord. Lord, we thank you that you have helped us open up to other communities within the city not, and, and help those that are in need. A lot of uh, single, uh, single parents with, with families and so on. Uh, those that uh, need uh, help on a day-to-day -day basis, Lord, and, and practical help, Lord. Lord, we thank you for our pastor of a different background than us. We thank you for, for uh, new ideas that come and that we can uh, move forward together yes. with the one thing in mind. Yes, Jesus. And that is to preach the word, lead people to, to you, Jesus. Yes, Lord and disciple them and make them a, a, a blessing to people in, in their community and at their places of work and in their institutions of education, Lord. We ask this in your name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen.